cinema. So you, I, I say, did you go see the Batman? Yep, I saw Batman. You gonna, you gonna give me anything? <laughs> like worst Batman you've ever seen, best Batman you've ever seen? I'll give it. We're in the middle. I know you like me giving ratings. Yeah, I do. I'll yeah. give it a five. You give it a five. A five. Five out of ten. Five out of ten. I thought it was better than that, dude. There are things I like about it. Right. There's things I don't like about it. Right. And they kind of balance each other out, so it kind of like sits right in the middle. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it either. Right. So I give it a five. I didn't think that it's the greatest Batman movie I've ever seen, but I did love it. Like, I did like certain things about it a lot. Okay. Positives. It's beautiful. Love the tone. Tone is great. I, I love... figured you would. It would have been your favorite Batman movie just off the cinematography. Okay, that fucking bat in the cage, and he <laughs> sticks his fucking hand in there, dude. Right. I was just like, oh, that's a money shot right there, boy. Um, well, just spoilers, just in case we say anything that we probably shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For going forward, um, I was sitting there thinking while I was at work. I was like, who is this Batman made for? Like, I it's not. It's too dark for little kids. Right. But it's a PG thirteen. Which is plays into it, but I feel like it's not as tight with the script as it could be for like people that are well versed in film. And then I was thinking, if I saw this when I was like sixteen years old, it would be my favorite Batman movie. Right. So that's who I think it's made for is like teenage, angsty comic book lovers. I don't know, man, because Paul Dano did a fucking fantastic. No job acting, every acting did so good. And I'll be honest, man, if if I feel like what most people judge Batman off of is not like him as Batman. How is his Bruce Wayne? And that's probably like I like Christian Patterson. You know what I'm saying? I like him, but I didn't like his Robert Bruce Pattinson. Wayne. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> Robert Pattinson. Yeah. I didn't like his I didn't like his uh Bruce Wayne. You have to think though, is this is so new to him? That he hasn't transitioned fully. He doesn't know how to balance the two between Batman. I don't feel like there was any change at all, though. That's what I'm saying. I felt like he played it just like he did the Batman. Right. But that's what I'm saying is like he's like he's vengeance right now. He's vengeance. Mm -hmm. He's out for vengeance and ties into the movie. So he's all about getting revenge. So he hasn't transitioned into being a hero for the people. So what I will say is I'm excited for number two. Oh yeah, for sure. Like if they can tighten the script up. That last scene, like I don't want to give it away, but I know you saw it. Like, eh. He was kind of. Eh. Oh no! I hope he does a better job with, yeah, yeah, yeah. with more time. But right. like for a little quick little, you know, a little Easter egg, like I was pretty cool. It was kind of cheesy between but, it, what, between him and Dano. I love that shit. It was kind of cheesy, but you know, it's a friend. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> but yeah, the look of the movie. The way it's shot, he's great director. Um, that all the actors were great. The only thing that fell flat for me is the script. I felt the script was kind of weak. I like that they tried to get back to like the detective aspect of it. I did, but in the beginning, he was, was a really good a... detective. But you have to, you have to admit, there's no, some. I things think it was just that was how good the Riddler. Like he just like, and then like you said, it you can't back. figure out what a rat with wings is. They struggled on that for about 10 minutes, Nick. No, I don't think that, uh, <laughs> I don't think that, what should we call it? Um, I don't know. I think it was just the fact the Riddler was that good, like that much further ahead. He was that much more desperate. Like, no, I don't know. no excuses. I think that, it's just, he, he didn't, he wasn't like as good as a, def- a detective as I've right. expected him to be. You it's, know what I mean? Right. And I think he even says it. He's like, I'm not, he's like, I'm not per. He's like, I'm still learning. Like I'm, I had to. You know, get better. They need me to be better. Yeah. Like, he does fail miserably. Like, the fucking city gets, you know, spoilers, like I said. They got their feet wet. That's That was their the whole... Rid- you mean their the feet Riddlers. got wet, dude. <laughs> the Riddler's plan was to get everyone's feet wet. They destroyed everything. Like, <laughs> billions of dollars They seemed fine. They seemed <laughs> fine. They're having to get airlifted out by choppers. Yeah, but they're okay. They, they just turned, got their feet a little wet. They turned their city <clears throat> into fucking New Orleans. It just, like, it didn't, I don't know, it didn't hit for me. It didn't, you know how like at end of movies you get that like shiver down your spine like holy shit that was epic. I didn't get that at the end of this. The The last third act kind of fell apart for me. 
like I said, it wasn't perfect, and uh, I I liked the way it looked, and I thought the action scenes were on point. I love that fucking new Batmobile. Action scenes were great. I love that new fucking Batmobile, man. Yeah. I need more of that shit in the second one. <laughs> I got you. I got you, you fucking psycho. Yeah. And I thought so maybe they were going to ruin it by having it in the fucking trailer, but it was still just as a badass. Yeah, it was a longer cut, so it felt more impactful. Everybody was on their A game. I just wish the script was a little better, but... You well, know, you that's know, why I put it at five. Like, I didn't hate it. Well, Matt Reeves, you know, the first one, the first Planet of the Apes wasn't the best, you know, but by the time we got to war, well, he, he he had it, killed it. That's how I felt about uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman. Like, Batman Begins, it's good. But when you got to the Dark Knight, like, that shit was epic. So I, I'm hoping the same thing is going to happen. And then I feel like the more him and Pattinson get together, like the chemistry, Mm -hmm. I think it'll be better. And it made me think, because I know Robert Pattinson didn't want to work out for this one. I think he did that on purpose. Like, I think he's going a little method. Like, I'm not going to get super jacked for this role because he's still like a new Batman. But for the second one, I'm going to shred up because I've been training for a while. I've been, I've been at this for a while. So he's going to be more, a a more badass Batman. In a worst case scenario, they'll just put more muscles into the padding. (laughs) You know, because, like, I love that fight scene where I guess it's, like, the Joker gang or whatever, and he just starts beating the fucking shit out of all of them. Right. I have to say, I thought the bulletproof suit was going to bother me, but it really didn't bother me. It because he's cool as shit, though. Because he's new, he's like, I got to be... I got to be bulletproof. I got to be able to fight Man. crime. So it makes sense. He doesn't realize how fucking heavy that is and how it's, like, hindering him. Yeah. So it didn't bother me. It really didn't bother me. Plus, it was a cool ass shot. When I that. wish you would have fucking went into it a little bit. Like they didn't explain it at all. Like it wasn't like I'm working with an experimental this mm-hmm. or like nothing. It's just like, oh, OK, you're just bulletproof. Cool. Yeah. Because they're hitting him. Yeah. With like close range. You know what I'm saying? Shotgun to the fucking chest. Shreds that shit. But yeah. It's still cool shit, though, because like you said, in the dark and you see the gunfire that you just see him breaking motherfuckers down. Like, Mm -hmm. I love the shit at the end and the rafters. That was great. Uh, The one there's a couple of things that I did actually really like. And one of them is the reason the Riddler got where he was is because he was inspired by Batman to take down, you know, he and was inspired by vengeance. And that's when Batman realizes he needs to be more than a vengeful Right. person he needs to be a hero right. so that was a cool little arc it didn't it didn't hit like i wanted it to but i like the idea the idea was there um another little easter egg the riddler uses that thing to like kill people with he like a blunt object yeah well batman picks it up and he doesn't know what it is and then the uh the the police officer was like oh that's a, a carpet tucker so it's to show like batman or bruce wayne has been a rich kid and he doesn't really identify with these, you know, tools that people would use. Right. You know what I mean? I, it was a nice little hint at his character. Right. He's like separated from rich to blue collar workers. I don't understand like how he's been doing. I don't, I don't know. Like they retconned a lot, dude. Because is this supposed to be when he starts his career? Mm-hmm. Their cell phones. He's got fucking contact cameras you know what i mean like how is this supposed to be in the 80s or the 70s or 60s or whatever and you got all this technology yeah yeah because in the christopher nolan ones they had you know lucius fox giving him all the technology so you're not sure how he's getting all this and i mean alfred i mean don't get me wrong alfred was weak andy circus didn't do a terrible job but i actually like jeremy irons Mm -hmm. alfred way more um, Michael Caine. Oh, Michael Caine, yeah, for sure. But I'm just saying, as far as like recently, yeah. Um, I don't know, Andy. Serkis. I don't think he had a lot to work with, but at the same time, it was a weird fit. Well, they had to they had to use him to to make to make a uh, Batman or to make Bruce Wayne more human. Yeah, you know, yeah, to humanize him. Yeah, because whenever the bomb goes off and he's in the hospital, I just didn't feel that. That's what I'm saying. That's supposed to be that part of the movie where you're like, holy fuck. Tugging at your heartstrings. You're trying to get Alfred, dog. Like, you got to go do something. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think they made Andy Serkis' character like 
want like you felt want like you were like damn now you want to get it back for him yeah i agree so and if you think about it and the they never went for that they never went for that mm-hmm. in any of the uh any of the nolan trilogy or or no, they didn't go after uh go after they only took one parent through that whole thing mm-hmm. i do like that they omitted the backstory like it didn't need to see it again Right, yeah. That's um, the first time ever. Yeah, right. Seriously, yeah. ever. <laughs> and I appreciate that. For once. Like, even in Joker, it was in Joker. Yeah. And that's not even a Batman movie. Dude. <laughs> it's funny, it's not a Batman movie, but he's in it. Like, yeah. <laughs> as a kid. Like, mm-hmm. I do love that part about the Joker movie, how they connected the uh, Thomas Wayne. Because like, you always think, Thomas Wayne's supposed to be this great fucking guy, you know, but like, that's another thing that I didn't really care for is he wanted to, the Riddler wanted to uncover all the truth. And the truth was Wayne tried to cover up a story about his wife. I don't know. It felt kind of weak to me. Well, supposedly uh, his, you know, Alfred said that your father wasn't, wasn't like ashamed. He just didn't want anybody to like to hurt her or whatever. Mm -hmm. Talk bad about her. Um, Oh, um, the guy that played Falcone. Oh yeah, I love. He John was Trichella. great. That was I a nice Trichella. surprise. Yeah. He did great. I, I love Colin it. Farrell. I thought he did a fucking great job as the Penguin. Yeah, you like, don't even see him. You just see that character. I watched an interview he did with, uh, I think it's um, Seth Gordon or some one of them, and uh, James Gordon. That's who it was. And he said the first day I went down to Starbucks and ordered some and talked to Jeffrey Wright. He's Jeff Wright almost had me thrown off set. He said, there's some crazy guy over there talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, Colin? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said that they're going towards Hush. That's what's going to be the next one. I'm all for that. I love the Hush series. I would love to see Hush. And I think Matt Reeves would kill that. Yeah. I think he could make that a great story. 100%. Yeah. You throw in the Joker a little bit. You know, I throw it in, the, you know, maybe give... I was thinking that too, like, I I love this tone and just do the Hush storyline with this tone. Oh, I'd love it. That's what I thought they were leaning towards more, mm-hmm. but then I got more of like a long Halloween vibe off of it. Long Halloween, Seven, yeah. and Zodiac. Because that's obvious. He said he based this yeah. movie off of those the Riddler movies. off the Zodiac, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, uh, I would say it was like... It was an eight for me. I think I need to rewatch it like to get like now that I know how that, it goes. That was one of the big, bigger gripes I had about it was I just thought it was way too fucking long. Like, it is pretty long, you know, but I didn't feel it until the third act. The third yeah, act, I was, I was like, say, I felt it that third hour. Yeah. About two and a <laughs> half. I'm like, OK, we need to wrap this bad boy up. Right. Like, once we caught the Riddler and all that shit, like, all right, let's do this. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Get us out of here, bro. Right. But I understand why people like it, though. It just the the script needed to be a little tighter. And I've literally seen people on both sides of it. Like, I don't like I feel like you and me are probably the only ones that have said that they love certain things, but they didn't love certain things. I feel like some people are like, this is the greatest fucking Batman movie of all fucking time. Yeah, or they're over. They're like, this is the worst fucking Batman movie I've ever seen. You know, like there's <laughs> yeah, not a lot of people in the middle of the road on this one. It's like, very like overrated. Yet underrated at the same time by a lot of people. I just think people are like, like they have to be one to of the extreme. Something wrong with it, like mm-hmm. people can't just enjoy. Like that's what I said, man. That I feel like DC gets shit on so much, bro. Like people can't just enjoy a DC movie. Yeah. Like Marvel could literally dig any fucking superhero out of the grave, make a movie about it, and it'll be it's a, a home fucking run. hit, dude. Right. It'll be even if it's not that good, it'll make money. It'll get a TV series off of it, whatever, dude. Well, actually, the recent movie they put out was the first one that actually, like, lost money. But anyway. Which one? I don't remember. I think it was The Rings. Oh, Shang-Chi? No, Shang-Chi's good. It's solid. Yeah. Maybe Eternals. I'm I think sure. Black Widow maybe made. And, oh, it was probably Black Widow was yeah. the first one. That and I didn't lost. think Black Widow was bad. Yeah. I, um, but I like yeah, Scarlet that's Jones. the thing about DC is they've dug themselves into a hole now everyone seen feels the need to like nitpick every little thing about their movie like i said i don't love it but i don't hate it either it's a decent movie I don't there's know. a lot to love about this movie I, I just feel like it's super unfair man like i feel like like 
like anything Marvel does turns to gold, but DC has to jump through. They have to do checklists. They have to jump through hoops. They right. have to be has to be A B C for to, it to be considered a hit. Like I just don't like that. I do have to give credit where credit's due. Is they're staying with the gritty thing? Yeah, is like they didn't. I don't need all sunshines and rainbows, man. I yeah, like that's a what I was. Shit. I was actually worried they were going to do that. It's like, oh, we're not working with the dark and gritty, so we're going to have to like take Marvel's approach and go all you know, right. unicorns and rainbows. But they didn't. They stayed with the grit. They just kind of like worked on you the know one. the script, and it's really well. It's a really good movie. Yeah, it's you know, it's really well done. Yeah. So good looking. Like, if anything, put it on mute and just but enjoy I, how good it looks. I like what you said, though. It makes me excited for the second one. Yes. And that's what you need. Mm-hmm. You need people to want more. Yeah. And that's where it, I feel like DC is taking a hit lately. Because even when we got something that was good and we wanted more of it, they said, well, you don't get more of it. Mm. Glad you love the Snyder Cut because that's all you get. <laughs> right. I'm glad you enjoyed it because you're not getting a single frame more from this guy. Mm-hmm. We've locked his ass the fuck out of the building. <laughs> and now he's like, okay, now we're good in this. And now you heard that they pushed everything but this back six fucking months. And they're talking about this and that. Like, no, y'all just don't want to fucking put these movies out, man. Because you know that they're going to find something to hate about it. Yeah. And now you don't know. Now you're not sure. Now you're backpedaling. You know, The Rock was supposed to be in this Black Adam movie like five fucking years ago, dude. Mm-hmm. And now look at it. It's 2022 and we'll maybe get to see it by the end of the year. Yeah. Like, holy shit, dude. I don't know, man. I just think it's unfair. It is. But like you said, it does get me excited to... For the one that because it made enough money, it's definitely getting a sequel. Oh, for sure, yeah, it's crushing it. Yeah, so, so yeah, I'm excited for the second one. I hope it's better. I hope it's a little shorter, but a little shorter. I like I like where their head was at. I yeah. like where they were headed. Yeah, let's keep on that path. You know, hundred percent. Yes, we're on the right track. Let's keep on this track. Listen to the fans, but don't go completely not. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. You know, I feel like fan feedback is more than critics sometimes just because, like, that's who you're trying to make happy. But at the same time, you still have to do something. You don't want to pander to them. Right. Exactly. Like, and this did a little bit of pandering, but it didn't go too panderish. I don't think it pandered any worse than Marvel does. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Let, let's be honest. The only reason that last Spider-Man was so fucking, like, epic, like, people love it so much Nostalgia. is because it gave you every Spider-Man you've ever fucking watched yeah. together. Right. Like if they hadn't done that, that would have been the biggest wasted opportunity ever, dude. Yes. You know what I mean? That'd be like if they were gonna do that with Batman and you didn't bring all the big Batman back. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you could probably let Clooney go. You know what I mean? You could probably let Kilmer go, maybe. You know, like, <laughs> but you're gonna bring Keaton. You're gonna bring fucking Christian Bale. Yeah. And you're gonna make sure they may you know, whatever. But you're gonna make sure you get those guys. And God rest his soul, if Adam West was still alive. If I hope to God you would get Adam West in there, you know, <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't, you know what I want to see? What's up? I want to see the killing joke live action with Willem Dafoe as the Joker, as the Joker. That would be cool. I was watching him as the Green Goblin and I was like, God, he would make such a good Joker. They've said that for years, but like they just never found one. Uh, him um, doing the killing joke, though, I feel like that's a good storyline for him. Because he's that's when Joker's absolutely insane. You know, it's crazy. They said the closest he ever came, I think, was when Jack Nicholson did it. Mm-hmm. And they said that Jack Nicholson's star power, like he just said, I want that movie. And they were like, well, you're Jack Nicholson, so you get what you want. Right. And I mean, you've only won three Academy Awards already. Yeah, bro. The chores. Like, <laughs> so yeah. he just called up Warner Brothers and was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Well, it's Tim's movie. I don't give a fuck. I'm doing right. It. Tell Timmy Burton that he's got the goat on set with him. <laughs> I wish I could do a Nicholson impersonation. But anyways. You do a little bit when you're talking about when he's talking to Robin Williams about the. Oh, yeah, yeah. The awards. I like that impression. Hey, Babu. <laughs> I got one of these in every decade now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Robin's like, it's my first one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Which is a crime against humanity, bro. Like, how is Rob Williams not have, like, he's, two he's, shelves of Oscars, He's bro? a national treasure, but he's not, like, the greatest actor that's ever lived. No, he's but just, when he he's warms on, our hearts. he's fucking on, bro. Yeah. Like, you can't tell me, like, and see, the problem is a lot of the movies he was great in didn't have categories for it. Still don't have categories for it. Like, you're not going to get one for Mrs. Doubtfire. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to get one for birdcage. You're not going to get one for uh, flubber, shit like that. Like Jumanji. One hour, one hour photo. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. Insomnia. No, nah, see what I'm saying? Like, I remember people hated that fucking movie. Insomnia? Because he played a bad guy. Right, right. Nobody wants to see Robin Williams play a bad guy. Kendra just saw it for the first time, and she's like, it's weird seeing Robin Williams as a bad guy. It is, dude. It's very unsettling. Yeah. That's why One Hour Photo still creeps me the fuck out. Yeah, I love that movie. Um, I own it. Because I will never turn down a Rob Williams movie. Uh, what Dreams May Come, that's a hard watch. I have that, yeah. It's a tough I one. I can only watch it Super once. sad, dude. Yeah, it's... Talk about movies that are sad <laughs> and depressing. I love Jumanji. That's, like, probably one of my favorites. It's a hard watch nowadays. That CGI does not hold oh, up. see, I don't care. I love <laughs> it. He's gold. And Aladdin, obviously. But, you know. Right. It's the greatest animated voice character ever. Is the genie from Aladdin. He kills it. He does. It's perfect. They said that they had like enough footage of him going the fuck off in there that like he could have done three movies by himself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, of course, because he's that badass. He is good. But uh, R.I.P. Goat. For sure. So next week in Bruges. Yep. Until then. Later, (laughs) y'all. Later.